How's it going guys? My name is Stone and welcome to these reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the most influential albums to have come out of the late 60s, The Velvet Underground and Nico. Uh, the album features lyrical content and musical compositions that were very unheard of at the time, which is probably why this album uh, failed to do anything on the charts and was largely unsuccessful upon its release. And it wouldn't get the praise it deserves until years later. As a result of the band's experimentation, many subgenres such as punk, garage rock, indie rock, to name a few, uh, can be found, or at least an influence can be found on this record. One thing I love about this album is just how much territory it covers in the span of 50 minutes. The use of feedback and hazy production really gives this record a sense of psychedelia, but the music that comes out of it is much more serious than that. It's something that would help redefine the direction of rock music in the 70s and how rock music can address things like drug abuse and sexual uh, topics of some sorts. In a ver sometimes in an eerie way, sometimes in a very beautiful way. This album is an essential listen for anyone who's trying to expand their taste to more experimental rock music as this album definitely was one of the first to really uh, not only stand out in one direction, but go in just so many different directions and open so many doors to new styles of music uh, that were not heard of at the time. The Velvet Underground start this album off with Sunday Morning, a beautiful pop song that really makes you feel like you're on clouds. Uh, Lou Reed's gentle vocals and the prominent use of the bell piano really capture that feeling of just sitting back on a nice lawn chair, enjoying a fresh Sunday morning. I don't know why I said fresh. A nice Sunday morning. <laughs> uh, like I Talked to the Wind by King Crimson, it's kind of a song that's just very atmospheric and very beautiful, and I feel like it's a song that I could try talking about, but it's for the best that you check it out if you haven't already. Uh, it's one of my favorite tracks on here, though it is not a blueprint for the rest of the album. As things get a little faster on the next track, I'm Waiting for the Man. Uh, this song has much more of a proto-punk sound to it, and uh, with those crunchy guitar riffs and Lou Reed's vocal style really uh, mushing well together, you could say. That's how I like to see it, just because the production really just adds that f punk flair to it. It contains a consistent rhythm that drives this track forward into the lovely song, sung by Nico, known as Femme Fatale. Nico's distinct voice adds a charm to this track and to its lyrics, I'd say. Backed by some really chill instrumentation, Nico and the band are able to uh, create a really relaxing and soothing song that reminds me of Sunday Morning to an extent, just because it's one of my favorites from the album, so a little biased. But it's still a really relaxing track. It's a little catchier, I'd say, compared to Sunday Morning. Venus and Furs then comes in with a very hypnotic viola and guitar melody that's led by uh, Reed's vocals that seem to follow the same drowsy atmosphere that the instruments create. I feel like this song has much more of a force to it compared to the tracks previous. And it leaves an impact that is very psychedelic, but not in the same way that Sunday Morning is. It's a darker side of the band that... Uh, a, side of the band that we'll see on the second half of this record but it's a great track one of my favorites as well yeah <laughs> uh run 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 features a very upbeat melody and chorus that would probably stick out to everything else on this record if it wasn't for the production being really hazy it just sounds old it sounds like it was like a 30s or 40s song or 50s song 30s um but the one thing that also makes us song relevant to the album. It's just the noisy guitar solo that I happen to love so much. I feel like uh, I say that about this and it, every other moment on the album that features very noisy moments just because um, I feel like they scratch a part of my brain that no other music has been able to scratch. And I don't know if that's a weird way of saying it, but I think it makes sense, right? I don't know. Uh, overall though, Run 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 is a very fun track to listen to and I think out of all the songs that are on this album is the easiest to dance to if it wasn't maybe for that guitar solo but we close this first side 
of the album with uh, Nico's second lead performance, All Tomorrow's Parties. This song also contains a haziness similar to Venus and Furs, but I think it's more driven by the vocals than anything else. This isn't to say that the instruments are uh, not essential to the beauty of this track, because they are, as the swirling keyboards and the impactful drumming by Maureen Tucker strengthen the psychedelia that this song creates. For a while, it was my least favorite song on here, just because I felt that the double lead, the double track lead vocals, um, really, I don't know, they kind of make it sound like a bunch of nuns singing, which used to be, I, know, I find, humorous, but I feel like that comes more from Nico's accent than anything else, so there's not much I could do about, or say about that. But it is a great song, though. I've obviously readjusted my opinion about it, and... I think it's a great way to close the album. But then we flip the record over and open things up with the incredible, emotionally filled track, Heroin. This song begins quietly with a relaxing guitar melody and some li some of the best lyrics that Lou Reed had ever wrote. I find that it's hard to notice just how much louder the song gets over time just because of how powerful Lou Reed's lyrics are. As they're able to be poetic, but very blunt and honest at the same time. But once we get into the last few minutes of the track, everything is just super chaotic with a shrieking viola and a bass-driven drum that, oh, along with Lou Reed's just nonsensical, not sorry, nonsensible lyrics at this point. And uh, the song just suddenly closes off on a rather quiet note that's similar to the beginning of the track. Though I've never used heroin, I like to think that this song really represents the effects of the drug. Because, I mean, I, I think, I'm pretty sure Lou Reed's tried it, so... His perspective on the drug really works on the song, and it really gives the listener an idea of what it can do. One of my favorite tracks on here, I feel like the lyrics, or the song itself, is not just music, but it's almost like art in a way. And I don't mean to say that in a very... What's the term? Like, uh, like a very... I'll just say it, like a douchey way or anything like that. Dang it, I can't think of the term. I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Um, obnoxious. Like, oh, whoa, bro, this song's crazy. But, I mean, it is an interesting song. But I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't already. There She Goes Again kind of throws me off whenever I listen to it, though. It's just because it comes right after Heroin. And I feel like this track, similar to Run, 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 is very upbeat and much more melodic. Much happier sounding overall. Though the lyrics may say otherwise. But like Run Run is a very accessible track that is very nice to listen to. I don't come back to it too often, but it's still a great track. And then uh, it's followed by another accessible track with Nico's final lead performance on the album, I'll Be Your Mirror. And man, this is a, such a beautiful song. I find it crazy that this song is even on the same side as Heroin, let alone the same album. But that's just what I love about this record, it's just how diverse the music it is, and how they're able to make it all work together. I find Nico singing on here to be very lovely, and it really adds a, an innocence to the song, especially compared to how dark and menacing things would get on the next track, Black Angel's Death Song. I would say this, this is another favorite track of mine on the album, but after know, talking about this album for the last nine or so minutes, I've come to realize just how strong every track is on this record. Whether it's supposed to be dark, beautiful, or just catchy, they all capture their sound amazingly, and this track is no ex exception. I remember being fascinated by the song ever since I first heard it, as the, vo sorry, as the viola adds such an ugly yet psychedelic twist to Lou Reed's guitar and vocals. Whenever I hear this song, I just it just demands my attention, like all of it, just because it has nothing like I've ever heard before, and still is a song of its own kind. The album then closes on the heavily jamming song that is European Song. European Song. <laughs> uh, this track begins with a very catchy but short vocal performance before going into some distorted and almost inaudible guitar playing that goes on for about six minutes or so. I think that the song wouldn't be as good as it was if it wasn't for the fact that it was the closer on the album, just because I feel like it's much easier to know that this is the, the final song, so it's easy to just lay back and 
let it play out. Because it is a good song still, but I feel like it would have been tough to hear all of it, or want to hear all of it, when you were only in the, like halfway through the album or something. But, I, like I said, I think it's a great way to end the record. Um, it offers a few more minutes of that familiar Velvet Underground sound, or that insanity that Velvet Underground can create. And it sounds similar to what, well, maybe it's foreshadowing what would the band would do on their following record, White Light, White Heat. It almost feels like the song carries a weight, carries the weight of the album on its dull and oversaturated guitar notes until it eventually lets itself go and closes the record in a very rough yet appropriate manner. But to sum up my thoughts about this record, The Velvet Underground and Nico, uh, well, yeah, The Velvet Underground and Nico were able to create such a amazing debut album, one of the most influential debut albums to have ever come out. Uh, I mean, there's just a canvas of music on here that you could choose from, and while some of it is more muddy than others, one can learn how to open their eyes to more experimental and more avant-garde music through this record. And it because it really helped change my perception on what rock music can do and what rock music can be. And the lyrics especially, because I know Lou Reed's ver lyrics are very distinct, but they're unbiased, which I find to be very t touching. Like, lyrical poetry, you could say. But yeah, guys, um, that's all I really have to say for this record. I hope you guys go and check out... I hope you guys would consider checking out my other videos if you like... If you think we have similar tastes, or just like where the direction the channel's going. I'm just gonna be posting more psych videos from now on. I don't really have any more plans for anything different. But yeah, uh, I'm excited. I've been starting school, so, you know, I've had less time to do this, but it's been fun whenever I tried writing and reviewing. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.